Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice exponential equation. We have nine times seven to the power X plus one equals two to the power six divided by X. This is a really nice, be beautiful question. At the same time, pretty non-standard. And this equation is another beautiful equation from Romania. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the solution of this problem. We're also gonna be considering the graph of two functions, which is gonna give us a good idea of what is going on. Okay, first of all, think about when you have an equation like this, what would you do first? With exponential equations, you usually wanna get the same base on either side so that you can look at the exponents or you want the exponents to be the same, so on and so forth. So there are some simple cases, but this one is pretty different because if you look at it, first of all, the bases are entirely different, seven and two, and the exponents are also very different, and we have additional terms. So this makes the problem much more difficult. But considering the fact that this problem probably appeared in a math competition somewhere, or written by a professor who is involved in math competitions, the type of problem that it has, tells us that there's something extraordinary about this problem, which we're gonna talk about. Anyways, this is from a book uh, which I did some problems from before. I think it's called Algebra Problems. Uh, it's in Romanian, but I can understand the math part of it. Anyway, so this is the problem, and how do we solve this equation, right? First of all, we're gonna be looking at different cases. For example, some of the simple cases like x equals zero. Is x equals zero a solution? Let's find out. If x is zero, we get nine times seven to the power zero plus one on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we get six, two to the power six divided by zero. Uh-oh, this is impossible, right? We can't replace x with zero because x is in the denominator. So this tells us that x equals zero is definitely not going to be a solution. Great, having eliminated that, eliminated it gives us two choices, either x is positive or x is negative. Now, why does that matter? Now, consider the following. If x is less than zero, 64 to the power one over x is gonna be 64 to a negative power. Think about it, like something like 64 to the power negative one half. What does that mean? It means one over square root of 64, which is one over eight. Or any other negative number, x could be negative one half as well, in which case you'll get 64 to the power negative two, but that just means one over 64 squared. Notice that in both cases, we're getting a fraction, a fraction that is positive because the base is positive, but a fraction that is less than one. In, in other words, a common fraction as opposed to an improper fraction, right? Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if x is negative, then this expression right here is gonna be less than one. But before we do that conclusion, let's go ahead and assign functions to these expressions. So we can easily talk about them. So let's suppose we set f of x equal to 64 to the power one over x and g of x equal to two to the power Sorry, not 64, where does 64 to the power one? Okay, sorry about that, I just, oh, I see. I turned this into 64 to the power one over x. That's why, that's why that, that, okay, anyways, you get the idea. So f of x, this is the same as two to the power of six over x, by the way. And g of x, we're gonna define it as nine times seven to the power x plus one. Now, we're gonna look at the following. If x is less than zero, then, 64 to the power one over x is gonna be less than one, and this is equal to f of x. So f of x is gonna be less than one if x is positive, I mean negative, okay? So what happens to g of x? Let's find out. If x is less than zero, then g of x, which is nine times seven to the x plus one. Now take a look at this. If x is negative, then this is gonna be a fraction, right? seven to the power negative one, for example, one over seven. So this expression can be made to be less than one. Can be made very, very small, but guess what? It's always gonna be positive when you add one to it, the sum 
is always going to be greater than 1. Why is this important? Because we are trying to find the solution, but when x is negative, f of x is less than 1, g of x is greater than 1, there is no way they can be equal because we're trying to solve this equation. f of x equals g of x, but x is less than 0 gives us no solutions. Does that mean there's a solution for positive x values? We don't know yet. We're going to go ahead and check it out. There's a chance, right? If x is positive, what happens to f of x? Is f of x going to be fine? Let's find out. f of x is 64 to the power 1 over x. Now, if x is positive, 1 over x is also going to be positive, but it could be like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. So the answer, depending on the x value, the answer could be greater than 64 or less than 64, right? But it's always going to be positive. What about the g of x? g of x, if x is positive, then this is going to be greater than 1, greater than 9, and greater than 10. So if we can make g f of x to be in that interval, so where they can intersect, this is going to work. So here's the thing. We might have a solution, or we do have a solution actually for x uh, positive values of x. The reason being, f of x is decreasing. Why? Because as x increases, 1 over x is going to decrease, and 64 will be raised to like a 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, you're going to get a number that is smaller and smaller. So f of x is decreasing. What about g of x? g of x is definitely an increasing function because of 7 to the power x times line plus 1. Okay? So they have to intersect at a single point. But the million dollar question is, where do they intersect? So that's kind of like a guesswork, right? So let's write it uh, this way originally. Notice that we are looking for a power of 2, which is 1 more than 9 times a power of 7. Guess what? If x equals 1, then we get 64 equals 2 to the power of 6, which is true. So that is a solution. And it is the only solution because they can only intersect at a single point. Now let's go ahead and check out the graph of these two functions, which will hopefully make things more clear. Ta -da -da -da. Here we go. We have the x root of 64, which is 2 to the power 6 over x, by the way. And we have the other function, 9 times 7 to the x plus 1. And as you can see, they intersect at a single point, which happens to be at x equals 1. So that is the only, only solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care don't forget to check out a plus bi where i focus on complex numbers and bye bye